Hey guys, and welcome back to Psychic Celluloid Signals. Today we're at the Dryden Theater, and we are seeing a film called uh, Marat Sad, I think. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, the, the title will be obviously in the, the title of this video, so uh, you'll be able to find it um, online if you're uh, interested in looking into it further. But uh, at any rate, um, we didn't, we don't really know anything much about this film. Um, I hadn't heard of it until, um, actually until our last video, um, the, the Dr. Caligari video, um, which was the first of the, the series of, um, was it after, uh, Bedlam? Yeah, I um, think so. And uh, we looked into it a little bit more because we thought the idea was really cool. Um, that they're uh, doing these films um, that kind of have to do with uh, like insanity and mental illness and stuff like that. And we came across this. Um, and it uh, features um, uh, Patrick McGee, I believe. Um, the, the guy who plays the writer in A Clockwork Orange uh, as um, the Marquis de Sade. And I saw that, and I was like, uh, we gotta go see this film, um, as, uh, as you, I'm sure you guys who have been following us for a while are aware, I'm a huge fan of Clockwork Orange, and I'm also very fascinated by, um, the Marquis de Sade, um, I, uh, saw Salo uh, a little while back, and, um, it's incredible. Um, but, uh, not for many. <laughs> um, but at any rate, I'm really excited to see this. As uh, am I. Yes. And, uh, anything you'd like to add? Not really. I'm just, uh, I'm stoked to see, uh, what the film, uh, what the film entails. Yeah. So we'll let you know what we think, and, um, we'll do that right now. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to Cellulite Signals. We just got done watching The Persecution and Assassination of Jean-Paul Marat, performed by the inmates of the Asylum of Charenton under the direction of the Marquis de Sade, better known as Marat Sade. <laughs> um, Slash in the middle. Yes. Um, a little bit less of a mouthful. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a, a, a trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this film, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of it, um, and, uh, don't, like, feel weird if you're not aware of it, but neither of us were, um, and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't think I've seen much as far as um, just researching it online. There's not too terribly much um, buzz about the film, which is a shame because it's really unique. Um, I know while I was watching it, I was thinking, like, I've never seen anything like this yeah. ever. Um, I've seen, like, I was thinking in my head little things that... Um, there's slight comparisons to, uh, but nothing uh, that you can say like, oh, it's like this type of film. Um, and uh, I'm, my guess is that part of this has to do with the fact that it was um, uh, done by the, the Royal Shakespeare Company. Uh, and it's kind of a play within a play within, within a film. A, <laughs> within a play. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, uh, um, as the, the title suggests, the, the long form of the title, um, it's, it's about, uh, the Marquis de Sade, who, uh, was locked up, um, due to being the Marquis de Sade, <laughs> um, in, in the 1800s, uh, late 1700s, 1800s, um, and, uh, he in this film puts on a play um regarding uh 
Jean-Paul Marat and um, his uh, involvement in the French Revolution. Um, and it's all performed by um, the uh, institutionalized patients there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's um it's interesting because uh, it's literally a um, it's kind of like they filmed a play going on. For instance, there's lots of like um, I'd call them kind of like pseudo fourth wall breaks mm -hmm. because um, in the film we can see they're performing in front of an audience um, and they are behind bars, <laughs> um, but they will often look to the audience or even someone might address the audience um and with the the camera kind of up close to um the actor it feels like a fourth wall break um but it's kind of not um which is interesting because it they are uh, assumably addressing the actual audience within the film so it makes it it's really um interesting it's uh i've seen some films before that were like uh straight up just like recordings of um plays but that's not what this is um it's much more i don't know film like it's for cinematic. lack of yeah it's it's um it is a film mm -hmm. um as opposed to uh, setting up a camera and recording a uh, uh, live production going on and all that um, but it still retains that kind of feel like um, you can obvious it's very obvious that the the actors um, are experienced in uh, theater work um, so that's uh, definitely an interesting little tidbit it's also a musical um, so, uh, we... So all you, you know, Sound of Music fans out there, yeah. check this out. Um, I, I, was, I was thinking a little bit more like, um, Rocky Horror. <laughs> um, uh, probably be more up that alley. <laughs> um, you never know. But, uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the music was fantastic, and I don't know about you, but, um... I didn't know really much anything about this film uh, going into it, including the fact that I didn't know it was a musical. Yeah, no idea. So um, it starts off, and they're, like, singing and uh, whatnot, and I'm thinking, like, this could be really good or very annoying. <laughs> I feel like that's... For me, that's how musicals generally play out. There's... um not a lot of in between because you have to do it just right like uh the music has to be done well fit with the scene not overdone um and it just has to like kind of flow like it doesn't um like you don't want it to feel like just out of the blue like oh all right oh, oh, music oh, home oh, oh, <laughs> music oh, number <laughs> i didn't say anything i'm just coughing um but uh this film really takes advantage of that and um, not only music itself but it takes advantage of the full range of kind of uh, like sound effects uh, that one could do on a stage essentially but within the film uh, which is really interesting we were actually talking about how um, uh, seeing this one could assume that the the, the production costs were not that um exorbitant I, I don't know the um what the end result was as far as uh, expenses but um i can't imagine that they had to spend a lot because the entire film takes place really in one room um there isn't really much any change of like uh appearance or outfit there isn't um any like major uh um like effects that need to happen throughout the film but it um uses it really uses minimalism to its advantage i think um 
it uh, uses it to bring you into that feeling that it is a play as well. Um, well, still, like like I mentioned, it it still has that cinematic quality. It never, um, it never feels like it was um, just someone recording a a, um, a theatrical performance. Um, which uh, it, if you're if you've ever been and seen like a theatrical performance and then seen it videotaped, it's really mm-hmm. two different beasts entirely. Um, but this this film really does a good job at uh, capturing the essence without um, losing kind of with that almost like uh, it's like a almost separation that you you feel in a lot of other films that um, have like a a, a play like um, they're they're done like a play um, so. Uh, I think we mentioned that um, this film takes kind of takes place in the French Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, this this is within the film or within the play rather, um, and uh, it regards um, Marat and his um, uh, uh, ideological rival. Yeah, um, uh, Desaad, um and. Uh, it's it's done fantastically. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, Patrick McGee plays um, Desaad, and um, all the acting was excellent. But um, he just he would um, he, he, there'd be like sequences where um, the story's being told, and he's kind of like playing the the director and the. The, the back kind of you don't see him or anything and then he'll like jump in with something and uh, it's just flawless like uh, his kind of maintaining of composure and in certain moments um, just his like joy is overflowing and um, uh, especially towards that end yeah <laughs> and uh, kind of the almost the um, restraint that he uh, expresses as uh, in his character um, is really what kind of does it for it um, because had he been more like um, uh, flamboyant yeah um, it wouldn't have worked the uh, the whole film and I I urge you if you feel interested in this film and you start watching it um watch it the whole way through uh it's not gonna take up too much of your time only 116 minutes (laughs) no um it's it doesn't just watch it the whole way through because trust us um, it's worth it yeah it it really is it's one of those films that really the whole thing is it's got a very slow build and then it just, it hits you. Yeah. Um, and All hell breaks loose. Yeah. Quite literally. Uh, it um, is a very fitting film for um, the Dryden's uh, After Bedlam mm-hmm. uh, series um, with regards to that. Um, with regards to... <laughs> The, the term bedlam itself and, and all that um so let's see what are some things that you liked about the film that you might want to bring up or anything to that extent well there are certainly specific scenes that I enjoyed immensely especially the 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 last two scenes of the film uh, really did it for me uh and there's certain and I love the acting and the music certainly, um, but I I also love the dialogue between uh, uh, Mar- Marquis and and, and uh, Mara Mara, um, and they're two competing ideologies in the way they they look at things mm. and uh, 
I, I, that and the the, 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 um, the sex and the sadism and the discussion and exploration of um, poverty and class warfare and and this is a some big for me using uh, violence to combat violence there's a lot of discussion of you know in, in revolutionary thinking you're, you're taking up arms against those who violated you you're violating the violator like it's very kind of like mm -hmm. you know I don't think that's the way to go about it mm -hmm. but I can understand that reaction mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's something I like I find very fascinating I, I always have so yeah those are definitely elements that I I really uh really enjoyed yeah I, um, speaking of sadism, I, uh, really enjoyed, and it was kind of subtle, um, in, in deliverance, uh, much like a lot of, uh, Desaad's character's, uh, stuff up until a certain point, but he, um, he starts to talk about, uh, his feelings on, like, um, killing and, uh, sort of, um, uh, the like destruction of humans and stuff like that and how um, uh, nowadays which was 1800s um, as far as the when the film takes place but um, he mentions that um, killing is kind of done mostly by like government or state type um, organizations and it's done just uh like any other process um and he expresses a feeling that um uh it's more almost human to do it with like sadistically essentially uh take pleasure in mm -hmm. the um the act because uh that is what separates us from machines um and i just thought that was um it very well encapsulated kind of like uh um this like sadistic uh um uh kind of what would you say like ideologies mm. that um we associate yeah. with and have named after <laughs> yes um Marquis de Sade yes uh so I thought that was just um superbly done and uh yeah just if you're if you're interested at all um in the French Revolution or the Marquis de Sade or what we've said so far I'd highly recommend this film um it is um shocking but in a very different way than what I'd mentioned before um uh, Solo, 120 Days of Sodom. Um, it definitely belongs in those same lists. Yes. Most shocking films of all time. You know, you've mm -hmm. obviously all seen and read those. Yes. Um, it's uh, a very different kind of shocking. It's more... Um, uh, kind of associated with, like, uh, pure ideology and that sort of thing, as opposed to... Um, a more visual uh, and, and um, narrative type uh, s disturbing yeah. <laughs> factor because um, if you just watch the film like um, visually for instance uh, it's not excessively disturbing mm -hmm. um, and if you um, were to watch it and not pay attention to kind of like the nuances of what they're um, discussing and um, uh, the the kind of beliefs and uh, thoughts being expressed in the film, then it also won't feel very disturbing. But if you really immerse yourself into the um, uh, what is being kind of Disgust essentially, it's like the the film is in it in itself a sort of discussion, um, both between it's, characters it's and a, almost with the audience. It's a transgressive work that explores transgressive acts against yes. um, the powers that be. Yes, um, and uh, yeah, 
that aspect of it is quite, um, I guess you could say disturbing. Um, but in the, um, in the best possible way, I'd say <laughs> it's not, um, by saying it's it's uh, got disturbing elements, I don't um, want to imply to anyone, and I'm sure our, our fan base wouldn't assume this, but if uh, anyone is to stumble upon this video, I don't want to imply that it's kind of like lowbrow or trash, because it is, it's entirely the opposite of that. It's um, uh, like very classy, <laughs> I'd yeah. say. Um, much uh, like a clockwork orange, which we mm -hmm. were yes. discussing. Yes, because, um, uh, of course, as, as I mentioned probably a dozen times at this point, um, uh, Patrick McGee was in uh, a clockwork orange, and um, there are certain kind of uh, kind of stylistic and uh, sort of uh, delivery type um, similarities between um, A Clockwork Orange and, and um, uh, Murat Saad, um, for instance. Um, but as I also said, it's its, its own beast. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen a film quite like this, and I've seen quite a few films. I'm not... Uh, old enough and wise enough to say that I've seen um, enough films to uh, be able to, to say anything definitive with regards to anything. <laughs> but uh, I do definitely feel like this is a, a unique piece. Um, I Definitely underappreciated. I mean, we'd never heard of this and after seeing it, I've never seen anything like this, um, which kind of makes me feel like if there is anything remotely like this, it's it's so probably um, out of the public's uh, knowledge that, and, and probably not even complete and what have you. Uh, I just, I don't think there's probably anything like this. No, it's it's. It's its own brand of cinematic um, vision and viciousness, yeah. and it's uh, it's something to behold. Yeah. Um, so, any final thoughts? Any like um, specific? Uh, words to potential viewers or anything like that that you can think to include? Well, um, I would just say go into this film, clear your mind of everything else and, and focus on, on it in, in, in its entirety. Focus on everything. Like, take it all in and think. This film will not let you be a passive uh, viewer. It, yeah. it needs you, it wants you, it requires you to use your brain. Yeah. So be prepared to dust off your thinking caps and, uh, and yeah, go in and watch it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say um, definitely don't uh, choose this film as kind of your, like, uh, winding down <laughs> after work uh, kind of... Uh, just lazy popcorn flick, turn your mind off, because this is 100% not that. So if you go into it thinking, like, feeling like that, you very well could be disappointed. Um, so definitely, like, you know, uh, give yourself some time <laughs> uh, to watch Black it. Blackout a weekend. And, yeah. <laughs> entire weekend. And decompress and, and uh, maybe watch it with someone so you can discuss it because I don't know I so I've, they can make sure you're okay afterwards yes can watch your behavior for a few hours and yes um, but yeah like uh, I, I tell Glenn this a lot but I feel like especially this film I 
uh, don't know 100% what to say, which is why I'm rambling. Um, and why I'm saying very little. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's just one of those things that you have to really think about and have a couple really bizarre dreams about it <laughs> and um, uh, talk to other people who've seen it. And join your own revolutionary collective for a while. And yeah, live in and, a commune. And about um, five years later, you'll understand what it means. Partially. No, um, but uh, but on a serious note, yeah, it's um, uh, a very thought-provoking piece, mm -hmm. uh, and really, I think that's all I have to say. So. Um, uh, thank you for bearing with our ramblings. Um, if you found this to sound interesting, we recommend checking out um, uh, the Dryden's uh, After Bedlam series if you're in the Rochester area. If you're not in the Rochester area, I highly recommend <laughs> checking Drive. out the Rochester area. Um, it is the Get in your car home right now and go. Kodak. Um, so that there's enough reason for any, um, film enthusiasts to come check this area out. And if you're here, um, I'd recommend checking out something at the Dryden. Uh, it never disappoints. Um, if, if, uh, if you thought watching your, um, uh, Criterion Blu-rays was good, um. Just you <laughs> but, wait. But, but yeah, no, um. It's you can't compare seeing something on thirty five millimeter, so, um, yeah. So uh, come to the Dryden if you can. Um, we'll probably be there if you're if you're seeing something that uh, we we share interest in because we're there quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, keep it psychic and keep it real, guys.